Peter Zalmayev, the director of Eurasia Democracy Initiative. Peter relocated his family but has stayed behind and is near Kyiv this morning. Peter, thank you for being with us. Russia is now in control of this uh, largest European nuclear power plant. How has that changed things for you these last 24 hours? Well, it's just been uh, an extremely dense uh, 24 hours. I was uh, an 11 year Soviet schoolboy in 1986 when the Chernobyl disaster happened. And we've been living with the, you know, the aftermath ever since. This, as you mentioned in the previous segment, would have been probably a few times like uh, uh, the order of magnitude of Chernobyl disaster. Uh, this is also, uh, by the way, coming on the heels of the Russian takeover of the actual Chernobyl site. So it seems that it's very much in line with Vladimir Putin's strategy of blackmailing not only Ukraine, but the, entire, the West and the entire world uh, with nuclear uh, conflagration of some sort, whether it'll be some kind of a tactical strike on Ukrainian city. But he's hinted at that already. And considering that he's kind of bogged down in Ukraine, he may be desperate to contemplate doing so. And it also may be uh, some kind of a blackmail through uh, holding these uh, atomic stations that you refer to. Peter, I know you're separated from your family. How are they doing? How are you doing? Well, they're doing fine. They're in the west of Ukraine, uh, which is uh, relatively safe, uh, considering that no part of Ukraine is actually, you know, safe at the moment. I am a closer, much closer to Kiev after I dropped them off. I have two little kids. Uh, with my colleague, we both uh, are, have been making our way slowly towards Kiev and are you know, considering uh, rejoining with our comrades at some point in the near future, uh, you know, because it seems like uh, Vladimir Putin realizes that, you know, he has to take Kiev, otherwise he has no game. And, you know, if you ask me right now, he does not have any game short of some kind of a nuclear strike. His uh, conventional forces are miserably uh, bogged down in Ukraine. He's uh, suffering all sorts of losses. His supply, uh, you know, supply lines have been inadequate. The morale of his troops is low. And obviously, Russia is losing in a major way in, the, in this PR war. Uh, uh, and, and, and Ukraine has garnered incredible support and, uh, and, 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 and love and sympathy from all over the world. Uh, you know, Peter, I'm just wondering if I had had the pleasure of speaking with you 10 days ago, our conversation would have been so different. Life has changed so much for so many in these last 10 days. Incredible. And 10 days ago, I mean, it would have been, okay, well, it's uh, Wednesday, the one, you know, the, the peaceful day, the, the last peaceful day before the, the Black Thursday. And, you know, no one in Ukraine believed it would happen. Sure, Western intelligence services kept telling that the invasion was imminent. But if you were in Ukraine, people were kind of just going about their daily lives. They're sort of used to the idea of a war in Ukraine, but somewhere localized in the east. Uh, and this has taken us by storm. I mean, this is like a, 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 you know, a, a, a watershed moment. Uh, it's, uh, it's happening on the scale of uh, an entire country of 40 million people. This is o only something that we read about in books, saw in movies, and all of a sudden we are living those movies and those books.